waiting for Sean again. I think my mic's working. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, okay, I'm like, man, I don't think my speakers are working. Yeah, all right, cool, awesome. All right, welcome to Vance Developer Diaries session seven, right? I think so. And today, I'm gonna share my screen. Today, we're gonna go over communicating with apps within uh, the Valence portal. Um, and let me just log in real quick. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so to start, um, I want to go to the API docs. And just point out we have this Valence Till Helper API fire event, which you can fire your own custom events. Um, the event is really whatever you name it. So here in the example, we have order selected. Um, <clears throat> so you could just fire that event, but something needs to be listening for it. And to listen for the event, there's another method, add event listeners. So today we're, we're mostly just gonna cover Nitro app builder apps that have um, the add event listener baked in already. But for people that are watching this either live or on the YouTube channel, if you're creating custom applications within the portal um, outside of Nitro app builder, you can have your app add the event listener for let's say, order select order selected and then another app could fire it off and you would receive it and you can do whatever you want so it's whatever's passed in um, so for example let me just go into app builder and just show you the the source so i'm just gonna oh i don't want app builder source of the So for example here, we're adding an event listener for my custom event and we're receiving Par, a param. That param could be uh, an object too. So if you have multiple items that you want to listen for, and then for the 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 application that would be firing it off, a simple, very simple example would be, you know, the app sets this object and then fires off my custom event, which then the other app would get and do something. Um, but I just want to let that be known just for anybody that has custom applications outside of my trap builder that would want to use this. This is already baked in with the balance to let help. So to, to sum up really this, so this add event listener and this fire event is really for app to app communication. Right. Yep. Yeah. It might be something was selected the other app that's running wants to know it was selected and might force itself to be active in the portal and, and do something or show something different. Then in, in, in app builder, obviously you're not writing code. So you, you don't really have that ability to add your own event listeners, but within app builder, that's why we built in a particular event that we're listening for that your other apps can fire off to affect that app builder application. Correct. Okay, let me go into App Builder. So before this session, we created um, three simple applications. And I'm just gonna go to the launch pad and show them. So we have customers. So this is just a simple grid listing um, the rows in the demo CMS file that's supplied with uh, Valence. And then also we use the KPI um, widget to show like, total open orders, total shipped, and on hold orders. And then we have another app, which is custom customer orders. 
And this is off of another uh, example table that's uh, with valence. It's demo ord underscore H. And this is just showing the order header information. And then the last one that we did was the details. So they order details. So it's demo ord underscore D. So we have these three apps. And the idea we're going to walk through is like communicating be amongst these three apps, maybe launching one, passing information to it, et cetera. So I guess, Sean, the first thing would be is I would want to be able to launch customers and then click on a customer and show those or the order header information for that customer. Got it. So, so in its, in its current state, that customer orders is just, it's loading the entire list of, of customer orders, which, which probably really isn't that helpful unless we had some sort of filtering in here, but you just want to have customers, your other customers app, you're going to click it and then it's just going to show the orders for that customer in here. Right. Right. Got yeah. it. So I guess the first thing is, okay, we're going to probably want to get into customers and we want to have, we want to set up a behavior for when they click a row on that customer list. So since we're in app builder and we will go to behaviors. So under the grid of customers, we have row click. We don't have an action. This one should simply be uh, launch app. So I want to launch another application within the portal. We can just search for that app, customer orders. So I want to launch customer orders. And I know that the way the database is, we want to pass the customer that's been clicked. So we're just going to optional app params so we can pass parameters to it. You can hard code parameters too, like uh, in app, true, you know, you can freeform type in there and then also bind to the record that was clicked in App Builder. And that's all we want to do for that one. Now I want to show that behavior. It's really not gonna. So let me reload this app to get that change. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna click it. And we see the exact same thing as if we launched it off the launch pad. Um, this app doesn't know to look for anything that was passed as a parameter when it was launched. So we need to do that. So if we go to customer orders, we know that we set a parameter of customer equal to the customer number that was clicked. So to look for any kind of parameters that are passed when it's launched within behaviors, we have URL parameter filtering, which we could automatically set to that. Um, any parameter that's passed, we can automatically filter a list, um, which we'll want to do in this aspect, but there's other ways you can bring in those values. Um, before I do that in app variables, you can pull it in from the, um, the parameter too. So we could create a, customer and then map it to that customer URL. So your app variable would have that value. Now, do we do it that way or is it just do the straight filter? I think just straight filter. So this is where you can, we'll list all the widgets that are currently in the app. And then you just select the widget that you want to filter based off of a parameter that's been passed in. And there's my customer number. And then what's the name of that parameter? So it's just customer. So when you click that, it's showing the fields of the data source behind that widget, right? Right. So any, yes, any columns that are on that table that's mapped or on that data source for that widget, we would show. And we would show upon, all widgets. Yeah. So upon this app launching now, it's going to look for that customer parameter. And if it finds it, it's going to filter the widgets results down to customer equals Custno, basically, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah, it would be Custno equal to whatever value is passed in. If it, and like you said, if it finds it, if it doesn't find it, it's not going to apply the filter. So I can still go on and use this application, even though I'm 
even though I'm looking for this, it'll still behave as it did before when I just launch it from the portal. Yep, that's correct. So now we're hoping to see a smaller list. And we are, only 24 rows now. Might be nice to set the title as well. Yes, that's a good idea. So we can do that by, if we go, we would just probably want to do that as another parameter. So if we go into customers, Back to our behavior, that's the row click on the launch app. We want to pass the name. So, uh, name. Now, in orders, we want to consume that name and set the app bar title. That would be, I would use an app var variable for. Right. Uh, I think so I think when you went into behaviors, I thought I saw there's we have the place. Oh, is it canned in already? We don't have to use an app for. Okay, cool. Name. Reload this app. <clears throat> Sweet. There's our name of the record that was clicked. And then we're just seeing that subset of the list. And just and to I, point out too, if, 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 if we, if you wanted to, you know, you could put in like orders for, and then you would put your replacement variable. Like when, when Johnny was passing the launch URL apps, you, you could also combine text in there as well. If you wanted to, I'll, I'll just do it since you brought that up. So here you're saying, Oh, I think, no, I think when you, when you call it, when, uh, Oh, when oh, oh yeah. Cause then we could just put it in the text and it would just show it. Right. Sweet. Okay. All right. So now let's just point out that if I close this customer orders and then call it without calling it from another app, I'm just calling it from the launch pad. We're going to expect to see that title the same and then the full list customer orders and that full list. So it worked as it did originally because there are no, those parameters weren't passed in. Okay, so now I guess the next thing would be is what I'd like to, to do is if we could, I want to change, I want to, the flow of it, I guess I'm thinking is that I am in a customer, I launch the order, order inf header information, this might not make sense, but just for demonstration purposes, I want to change the status and then force these to reload because it's, you know, once we change that status, so then I would see that change dynamically. So based on you changing that, it's gonna go, based, based on you changing in a header of a particular order, it's gonna change information on that customer's app. Right, because that customer's app, that back data source, 
um, like let's just look at one of the KPIs. It's just looking at just grouping for a specific or you know status. So it should rerun, and I should see the change, the the, the count change. That's what I want. So I guess first is we're going to want to go to orders. And I would do that by, I guess I want to, I want, I want the user to say I, I'm done. I, I want to go back to the customer application itself. So let's just quickly, we'll throw in a, um, we'll throw a button in the header and the app bar. I'll just throw it back in here for demonstration purposes. So here I'm saying I, I, when they when they click this button, I want to what I, what I want to do is I want to go and show the cut the original customer application that's currently um, running because I was called from there, but I also want to force that application to um, reload those three widgets. So I could do that with the exec script. And this is where we're going to, well, this is where we're going to get with the firing of that app, um, that event, since we already have a canned event that's listening. So I'm just going to bring this up. Wow, app ID. I, for this purpose, I guess that we should, should we show the uh, saving off the app ID and passing it instead of hard coding it? It might be. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a good idea. Let me do that. So the app ID, the reason we bring that up is so, you, you know, every app has its own unique ID on that instance. But if you're moving those apps between instances like importing, exporting, <clears throat> excuse me, um, NAB applications, that app ID could change because you could export a NAB app in instance A and then import it to B. Well, that in other B instance might have many more apps. So the app ID would definitely be a different number or ID. So let's, let me cancel this. And if we just take a step back too, so, so, and not, you know, maybe it's already clear, but so customer, the customer's app gets launched and then he launches customer orders. So customer orders is going to fire off that, 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 that special event that um, it's called nab update. And when that event gets fired off, every it, it, the, the portal itself fires that event. So every app that's running sees it. Now, every app might not do something with it because one, they're not listening to it or it's really not meant for that application. We need to tell that event to say, look, this is the app. This is the specific app I want to act on this event. And that's where the app ID comes in because each app has a unique ID. Right. So what we want to do is we want to get the app with customer. I don't want to go in and hard code and say, Oh, let me check the app ID. Oh, it's a 1001. Well, now I move it over to another system and you know, I import it and it's at 2040. So I don't want to rely on that. So Johnny's going to show a technique where you don't have to rely on that. Right. And we're just going to first just, so every app that's running in the portal <clears throat> has, some specific parameters that are set upon that app um, at runtime. And one is app, right? It's app or app, it's app. Sean? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so then if we just do app equal to, how am I gonna pull that app in then? Well, we wanna go, we, we, we wanna create an app variable. Right, to set it. That's my app thing. ID, right. right? All right, brain fart. Okay, so my app. There you go, my app ID. app ID. And then URL param is app. So it's been passed in. So every time when you're on the launch pad and, 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 you, and the user clicks an app, the portal is adding its own parameters behind the scene to that app. One of them is app, which is actually the app ID, the unique app ID. 
So we're an app builder right now. Balance uh, Git URL param app. So it's app 89. So every app. Now that my app, app variable is going to have a value of, we don't know. You know, I, I don't know what the cost. I think it's, one, I think it's 1003 or something like that. Okay. So now we just want to pass that on the click. So app equal to app for my app. So now we're passing three things, <clears throat> the customer number, um, the customer name, and then our app ID from the current app that's running, which is the customer's app. Hey, Johnny, I wonder too, I wonder if, if, if calling that thing app is a bad idea. That I is wonder. a bad idea. Thank you. Um, because we're, then we're overwriting what valence yeah. passes. So right. calling app, and it's more explicit too. Calling app ID, good point. All right, now we want to create another app variable in our orders to consume, to bring in that past, new past URL parameter. So, um, gonna calling app ID and I'm mapping it to what we called it. So now we should have the app ID of the caller. Now we want to go in, create, let's create that back button. Move it to the left. There. And we want to execute a script. And then this is where we come in with this event. And like we were saying, <clears throat> I guess now that I'm pasting this in, maybe I'll walk through this real quick. So like we were saying app, this is required. This is the app ID that you want to tell if it is running to do something. At vars, this this is really, like all this is gonna be documented. Right now it's under beta, but we'll have all this fully documented in Valence 6 when that's released soon. Um, but this would be an object of, let's say I had an app ID of, uh, uh, an app var of um, my test. I could then set that app var so um, that's so you can you want to set app variables in that other pro in that other application, right? Correct. So, yeah. so let's say we bound if we, we set an app variable to say this is set to our app title, uh, whatever that app variable is, we want to change that other application's app variable value to something, which then would reflect somehow or some way in the app. Yeah, and, and, and the, the true use and, and power of that is probably not completely uh, obvious yet until, until, we, until you see how in your app vars, in your application, you can bind those app variables to widgets in your application to automatically change things. But that's another topic. <laughs> right. That's probably a good one we should put on the list. Okay, so I'm just wanted to talk through these props before. And so reload widgets. So we're going to be working with this. So I'm going to skip over this just yet, just for right now. There's a reload all widgets. It's a Boolean. If I set this to true and that's all I did and I didn't, I just passed the app ID and reload all widgets, then it's just going to find all the widgets that are currently in the application and, and, and tell it to reload its data period. Um, so if you only have one widget in there, you could just say true there and be done with it. You know, it's a little faster. Or if you have many widgets and you want them all reloaded, you can do that just by setting that, that Boolean flag. Which in um, our case, we can do here, but it's probably overkill, right? We don't, we don't want to just blindly reload them all. We, we're looking at specific. Right, I guess, I guess we could do it. And then, like you said, it's overkill because this list would be reloading. And, and do we really need it to be reloaded? We really want to just reload these three. Okay. But... We could say all and, and yeah. just be done with it. Um, but it might be nice to show setting yeah. the widget names just yeah. you know, for demo purposes. Um, this FNC, like, <laughs> this is hard. Like, what this is, is a, you could pass your own function in that will 
be ran by the, the program that's listening for this up. So the app ID that you've, you've stated, you can pass your own custom function and it will run that function and do whatever you put in there. Um, that's a little, I don't think I'm going to get into it right now. So, so, so what happens when, when this execute script fires, the portal fires it and it has that app ID and that, that, that app ID that we pass goes, Oh, you know, that that's me. Right. Right. So then it looks, it's looking, it says, Oh, the nab update event. Well, I know the nab update event has very specific properties that I look for. Uh, one of which would be reload widgets. It's going to be an array and I'm going to look for any widgets that match that name and I'm going to reload it. And then that FNC, Johnny was saying, it, it's che it'll check and say, hey, do you have a function? Do you have code that you want me to run? And whatever that code is, is you know, you're, it, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's, it's going to run whatever you put in there at that point. Right. The only thing I would like to state is that this FNC, this function that you're passing needs to be a function that's converted to a string at the same time at that point. So just because we're talking about it, var my FNC is equal to some function, uh, console.log i. So I'm just setting it to be a string because then the consumer, your, the nav app, the nav runner, will take and see that the function is there, that it has a value, it will convert it from back from the string into a, a true function. Because since we're passing these as messages between the portal and these apps, um, you can't in, embed real functions. They need to be strings and then we'll, we'll convert them back. So for this purpose though, we're just gonna deal with reload widgets. And um, I'm gonna state that since we're not in the call, the, the customer's app, we didn't set the widget names yet. We'll just do it here and then we'll replicate it. But so these are the names of the widget. So I'm going to call. Basically, you're just giving it a friendly name. Right. So we can get to it. You could, you could not, we could not set a name on there and we could have passed the, the ID itself. So like every widget has an ID. You'll see it in the list of an app builder. But again, that's another, Thing that we would say stay away from because if you're exporting and importing into another instance those widget IDs can change or will change and this makes the code more readable too to have a friendly right name. the widget ID really means nothing right it's just a number right so I'm just gonna make them like open KPI shipped KPI and on hold API so I'm saying these are the names of widgets that this app has that I want you to reload, force a reload. And here we need to pass that app. And since we had it created as a at var, the calling app ID, we're just gonna click on that and it automatically places the text that we need, which is get app var, passing the name of the app var and it will pull in the value at runtime. And the last thing is, which we can see here, is we need to we need to call success, which is passed in, to say we're done. And again, the reason for that is that this function is it, it's ran in NAB, and it's going to wait. So if let's say you made had to make an XHR request or do some kind of calling another server, and you had to wait for it, so it's going to sit here and wait until success is called. Yeah, the point, the point is, is that this, this, whatever you write here, it will not return until you put that success. And the reason we do that is because you, we don't, we have no idea what you, what you might implement here. You might make external requests out to other systems or to your system and you want to wait for the response. So right. as soon as you put success, you're telling us that you're done. So let's just save that. So now all I've done is done that script to fire it off. The next thing I want to do is I want to close this app. So that's a utility. And I'm just going to say for right now, let's just close the app. So this is closing the current app, which is the customer orders.
Oh wait, I need to set those. So now we got to go back to customers and then name, put the names on those widgets, which are the KPI widgets. And that is just by hovering over each widget, you always have this gear, which is the settings, and you'll see this name property. So open KPI. Shift KPI, I called it. And on hold KPI. Okay. Let's start from scratch. I don't need this up. All right, so the hope is that we're gonna make a change that will affect one of these KPIs. Um, I'll, I'll take an open order and put it on hold. So 1489 and on hold is 202. We've updated that record, closed, 1488, 203. And you saw the mass, so they, all three of those widgets automatically were reloaded. So on that button click, we, we told another application, which is this app, by app ID, to do something, which is reload three of its widgets. And then after that was completed, we closed the current app that we were in, which was customer orders. Okay. And, and closing the app has nothing to do with it. Like, you know, he could have had just had that button there and, and Did caused it. it to refresh, but you know, he just happened to use that button to close the app as well. Right. So right. Totally independent events. Right. And I guess I don't like the other thing I was thinking about, and this was this morning before we started this is that like, we we're talking about in app, communication. I think this is a good demonstration of at nab app to nab app, but um, should we go and just create an app that just communicates with file editor passing the, the table info, which is another communication. It's just not, it's nab to another app that, which is not nab. Sure. So with that, we do have on the guide. So file editor, which, you know, isn't a, uh, Browser-based way to edit uh, tables on on your on DB2 tables. We have in there parameters it listens for too, um, and I I know where that's documented. I just got to find it. Optional parameters. So here are the parameters that are set, or it's listening for. So the file, the library. There's other ones like view only. Um, you can hide the home, hide the tabs, set a title. The reason that this might be helpful is I'm somebody brought this up. I can't remember when it was months ago, but they have many code tables that are like, I don't, I could create the code table or create a, create a edit grid for every code table, but it's just so much work. Cause it's just, I just want them just to add, edit, you know, delete just like file editor. And I want to create a widget for every one that has its own data source over and over and over again. So let's just see if we can create something. This is on the fly though. So I did create simple temp. So here we're just creating a temp table because I don't have we don't have a table on DB2 that says my 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 table, uh, a description of it. I mean, there's you could use an API if we wanted to, but just quick and dirty for example purposes. So this thing has three records. It's three of the files that we're working with. Demo CMAS, demo org D, demo org H. And it has a description. Okay. 
So the goal is I don't want to have to, I just want to be able to allow a user. So this might be just, I have a developer or a power user that needs to maintain these code tables. I don't have to create an, a data source and then an, um, an edit grid and then an app for all of my code tables. So I could have many. So let's just make it so that we don't have to do that. So we'll create a grid off of that new data source. It's gonna be super simple. No description. Okay, so we have these as the list, sure. And we could add a search but this for purposes of demo. Okay. Okay, let's go create that app. I'm going to filter by that tag and code tables. Okay, it's really not gonna do anything, but we wanna bring in, <clears throat> so this is gonna be a utility widget. I guess we could, we could add for the URL. So, uh, editor. And let's make this a fixed width. Okay, so the, the one here is I wanna be able to set, I wanna launch file editor inside of this URL, right? So I want to go here. Make that variables, I don't wanna do that just yet, I just wanna set it here. There's a flag here, apply portal security. We were gonna wanna do that because we're calling an application that's a valence app that requires like app ID, et cetera. So I'm gonna say yes. And then this one's just gonna be, Sean, you might wanna, was it production? I think it's build. Build production. production. This is something that oh. you would, go ahead. Yeah, you, if you went into app, if you went into portal administration, we, we could see we that. Just do that. I don't know it's called. And you know, while while Johnny's looking this up, alternately, you know, he he, we, you could also create this app where a click and it would just launch. Launch. You could do. That launch. might be. You want me to just do that? Would be easy. No, I think this is this is this would be more useful though. I think. Okay. How you're doing it. All right. But just so you know, you know, you could you could when they do the click. The easy way would be to just launch it into another portal tab. But what Johnny's doing here is he's showing you how to basically how to how to launch it in line within your application, so the user's not having to go from tab to tab or from app to app. So I'm going to go back to these params because I don't remember them, and I'm going to suck those in. So file equal to table name, and uh, let's just see what do we want to turn on here. Title, we'll use the description title. And I assume all of these are optional, right? It's, it's Yes, know. yeah, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you don't pass in a file, you know what I mean? It's not gonna really right. load anything, but. Right. Um, so here is saying like, we can, we can hide, like I don't want them to open up another file because file letter when it launches, you can open up multiple and have different tab and have tabs up there. So we'll just say, um, let's just hide. We'll hide that, set that to true. I wonder if we see what that looks like without it. Before it, just, just okay. See. Yeah, and then we can turn off those flags and see what it does. Uh, 
Uh, it's an app bar title. Where's my link? Okay. See if this one works. So we probably wouldn't want to, we could have used a section. I just want to see if this thing even. Um, well, I didn't try it beforehand, so I could have failed on this one. Oh. No, this works. Or not. Maybe I'll just launch as an app. This is Interesting, huh? All right, let me switch just to be in a regular app. I'm sure if we had more time and looked at it. Right, I'm like, it's 1042. <laughs> I can't. <Right. laughs> I probably have something wrong in the URL, but I'm not going to. Let me just blow this away. And then real quick, launch app. Nitro, maybe? There you go. Okay. It was VV file. And, and yeah, title. Title. That was it for now. So now we're in it. And I see what you mean. Yeah, that that home page, right? I wouldn't right. want to go back and see any of this stuff. Right. But the idea here is that if you do have a lot of code tables that you don't want to take the time of creating a data source for everyone, a widget, an added grid widget for everyone, and then it has to be an app, you could just have one app that just lists those tables that you want to just be able to quickly get in, change you know, add, edit, delete, whatever, um, and be done with it. So this is a, a nice, quick and easy way to do that. And again, you could change this to what they have. We have view, like view only. So if you had tables, like many tables, you don't want to take the time to create, but so you want to go this route, but it's for a user that you don't want them to be able to change anything. You could set that too. We have multiple uh, different parameters that do different things, but maybe we just hide, we use this one just to show. Yeah, maybe all of them, huh? Hide home, hide tab, that's. Sure. And then maybe while we're in it too, let's widen that width on that. Yep. So notice when you only have one widget in a screen and you put a fixed width, it centers it automatically. Yeah, we'll just leave it for now. It's fine. Okay. Not enough time. All right. So hide open file. So open file is where the application has that section where you can go and open up another file, another file. That was the whole point of file in the first place is you just launch it and you just keep on opening multiple tables and you get those tabs up there. But in this scenario, we don't want that. So we'll just set this to false. Um, what else do we have here? I think, I'm trying to think if open file is false. I don't know if hide home does anything. I'm not sure. I haven't used this, but I will set it.
Okay. So now I can't get back. I think the last one was hide tab. And I guess yeah, in this, case, this is it. Sense. Yeah, this one we would definitely, we don't even want to see that. Because why would I ever want a tab if I can't <laughs> right. have multiple, right? right. Sweet. That looks much better. Yeah. So yeah, this is just a time saver if you if you really have many. I know we've had customers in the past that have said like they just have so many different tables that are more maintenance tables, and they just to take the time to create the data source, the widget, and the apps over and over again. This is another way you can get around that. You just have one data source like we did here. You could already have a table on your IBM I that has that, that just lists the actual tables. And then, you know, like we put in a friendly description and then you could just use file editor from your NAB application to allow them to add, edit, or delete, or you view only if you wanted to. All right. I think that's all I have, unless you got any other. I mean, I think the only other thing, but it would just be redundant was just, I assume that third app was just to click an order and then view the order lines for it, but it's the same concept. Yeah, it was the same concept of the customers, the customer orders. We were gonna go into customer order details, but then it was just, it seemed, at, this morning I'm like, oh, that's kind of re repetitive because we just did the same thing between customers and orders. So I thought maybe trying to link in a file letter would show different app communication and it's a useful scenario because you know you could have many um, code tables that you need to maintain quickly and fast all right so all right and check the chat if there's any questions but i think that's it for for today unless anybody has any questions on this stuff going once <laughs> going twice, going twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully everybody got something out of this. So there's just communication between your Nitro app builder apps, um, your own custom applications. If you're writing them in um, Angular, uh, React, EXT, whatever, vanilla JavaScript. Um, and then also communication from a NAB app to a valence canned app, which is file editor. All right. I think that's it. So we'll sign off. Everybody have a good rest of your uh, day and enjoy the weekend. And we'll see you next week, next Friday. And unless something just came in, I'm seeing blinking. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.